And if the same will not happen to us, we need to know the people that backslide, how do they actually backslide? What makes them backslide? What did they do that made them to fall from the steadfastness and the grace of God in which they were before? Let me quickly show you. Number one, in uh, Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. We're reading there from verse 58. Matthew 26, verse 58. It says, But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace. And he went in, and he sat with the servants to see the end. He followed from afar. You have been following the Lord intimately and closely. And you have loved the Lord when you were born again. Prayer was something intimate with you. And reading the word of God was something you enjoyed and delighted in. And uh, everything spiritual was your delight. But now you begin to lessen your commitment and lessen your consecration. And then you begin to follow the Lord afar off. That is the beginning of backsliding. And then you see there, he sat down with the people that do not know the Lord. He wanted to see the end of the matter. That's the second thing that uh, uh, causes backsliding. Hosea chapter 7. Hosea chapter 7. We're reading there from verse 8. In Hosea chapter 7, verse 8, it says, Ephraim, he has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. You are a believer. When you begin to mix yourself with the people of the world, with the people that are jesting and joking and gambling and smoking and drinking, and they become your intimate friends and the people you love and the people that you are sharing your heart with, backsliding is coming on the way. Number one, walking far away from the Lord. Still following the Lord, but from afar. Number two, is mixing yourself with the people of the world. Number three, now you begin to even build the things you forsook before. Uh, uh, your life, now you begin to return, you begin to say, after all, what is bad in this? After all, why did I forsake that? After all, why was I so foolish to burn that thing away? In Galatians chapter 2, Galatians chapter 2, verse 18, for if I build again the things which I destroyed in the past, I make myself a transgressor. The things you have forsaken before, the things you repented of before, when you begin to go back into them, and you begin to build them up again, begin to bring them into your life again, you are now writing again to your old girlfriend, old boyfriend, that you forsook many, many years ago, and you are saying, I don't know how I'm going to live my life without this man. You made restitution with that man uh, some time ago, but now because of what shall we eat and what shall we drink, you begin to visit him. I'm not uh, going to commit sin. I'm only asking that he will give money for my upkeep. After all, we spent many years together and we contributed to building that house together. And little by little, you begin to build again the thing that you destroyed before. Number four, when we become so busy, we're busy, there is no time to read the Word of God. Quiet time, there is no time. And reading the Bible, personal study of the word, there is no time. We become, we become so busy backsliding. We're setting in Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 6. Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 6. Look not upon me, because I am black, because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyard, but my own vineyard have I not kept. When you become so concerned about other people, salvation of other people, steadfastness of other people, a restitution of other people, the things that concern other people, your own life, you're not taking care of anymore. All you want is just preaching and so winning and doing this and doing that. You are busy here, you are busy there. You don't have time for yourself anymore. And the Lord is not speaking to you anymore because you are not speaking to the Lord yourself. But sliding, welcome. And then number five, when some little, little things that you, you will say, this one doesn't matter. This one doesn't. In fact, I know a sanctified brother. I know a beloved, steadfast sister that even does that thing. And if I do it, it doesn't uh, matter. In, in Songs of Solomon chapter 2, verse 15. 
take us the little foxes, the little foxes, the, the little foxes that spoil the vine, for our vines are tender graves. When you begin to get into those uh, little, little things, and uh, you know the unbelievers uh, will call you, come, 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 come and see something on the television, and uh, this is not sinful, this is a good thing. In fact, they are preaching the gospel. It's a very good uh, choir song. And then you go in there, you sit down there. When that one finishes, pornography will come in. I will soon get up. I will soon get up. I will soon leave. I will soon abandon it. And then the next day again, uh, the person, come, come, come. I see this preacher, American preacher. He's there again. He's talking about uh, your church. And then you come in there. You see now again, little by little by little, your conscience is telling you, are you not going away? Are you not uh, getting away from the truth that you stood upon before? No, this one doesn't matter. After all, they are just preaching on it. And when those little, little things multiply, you will find that eventually backsliding has come. Number six is when you become prayerless. There's no prayer anymore. No time to pray. But Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26, Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, Watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. How about your prayer life today? How are you doing about praying? How are you really uh, storming heaven? I'm not talking about praying for healing and praying for deliverance and praying for all those uh, mundane material things. I'm talking about your spiritual life. You want to be strong in the Lord. You want to be fervent in the Lord. You want to be zealous in the Lord. And you want to stand your ground so that the devil will not push you down and push you back into sin again. Are you still that prayerful? If prayer time is now uh, not there anymore, backsliding is coming. Hosea chapter 8. Hosea chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 12. When you begin to now reject the word of God, and the word of God comes, and then you say, well, I'm not a new convert anymore. I'm not a, a person, a novice that just came. That one they are saying, that one is too hard. That one is strange. I didn't hear that one before. No, that one cannot be true. I will not accept that one. When you begin to pick and choose in the word of God, I accept this, I don't accept that. I will take this, I will not take that. When that comes into your life, backsliding is coming. Hosea chapter 8 and in verse 12. Hosea chapter 8, verse 12. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. The Lord said about these people, I have written to him, I have given it unto him, the great, great matters of my law, of my word. But now because they are backsliding, they count that as a strange thing. In verse 3 of that same chapter, Israel has cast off the sin that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. When those doctrines that were loved and appreciated, and every one of us have been rejoicing because of the deep doctrines and the deep teachings of the Word of God, when you begin to cast them off, I don't accept that anymore. I used to believe that. I don't believe that anymore. I don't believe restitution anymore. I don't believe sanctification anymore. I don't believe anybody and everybody can be holy. Maybe some special few people like so and so and so and so. Maybe they can be holy. I do not accept it for everybody anymore. Backsliding is coming. Number eight is when your emphasis comes on material things. Material things. Every time you are praying now, material things. Every time, whatever you are looking for now, material things. Material things, you go to that other place, get to this other place, because you are looking, not because you want to be sanctified, not because you want to be holy, not because you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, not because you want to be ready, prepared for the coming of the Lord, but because of material things you are running about. That's backsliding in uh, Psalm 106, verse 15. Psalm 106, verse 15. He gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. He gave them uh, the bread and butter they were looking for. The quails and the flesh they were looking for. He gave them the material things for the body they were looking for. And their body was uh, getting fatter, and their body was getting improved. But in the spiritual, it says, he sent leanness into their soul. And then number nine. It's when there is pride. 
the pride, uh, you know, you, you have arrived now. You've been saved and you have been sanctified and you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost and you know about this, you know about that and you can tell the story of that and the history of that and everything that comes up, you always have a word you are going to say about such and such. Pride has now come in, spiritual pride. When that pride comes in, but sliding will not be far. In Second Chronicles chapter 26, Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 16. Look at the latter part of verse 15, the last line. For he was marvelously held till he was strong. The grace of God was there. The goodness of the Lord was there. He was marvelously held until he became strong. Now in verse 16, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. Because for he transgressed against the Lord his God. And he went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. You discover there the people that uh, they do not remain humble before the Lord. They do not remain a people of no, uh, of no consequence before the Lord. They want to make of them now reputation, which the Lord did not do. And then pride comes in, and they act in any way, and they, uh, they just say anything they want to say and do anything they want to do. Because after all, they are no more babes in Christ. They are matured people in Christ. That's what gets us into trouble. Number 10 is when we follow the advice of unstable people. Advice of people that are not spiritual. Advice of people that do not really fully know the Lord and they are not wholeheartedly following the Lord. But because uh, that problem has been weighing you down. You are looking for counseling. You are looking for advice. And anywhere the advice is coming from, you do not mind. That's backsliding. Look at uh, Second Chronicles and in chapter 22 verse 4. Second Chronicles chapter 22 verse 4, wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord like the house of Ahab. Why? Because for they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. You know, unstable people came into his life and they began to counsel him and they began to tell him, that's the way to go, that's the way to go, that's the way to go. And the original truth he knew, he deviated, he shifted away from that original truth. Because unstable people, unsanctified people, and people that really were not following the Lord steadfastly, they became his counselor. Uh, that means that we have to be careful in our lives. Number one, you are not following afar off. Number two, you do not want to mix yourself with unbelievers and the people of the world. Number three, you do not want to build again what you have destroyed before. Number four, you do not want to be too busy that you will not have time for your own spiritual life. Number five, you do not want to say that's a little sin, that's a little fox, it doesn't matter. And eventually the termites of those little, little things, they, they, they take away and eat away your Christian life. Number six, you don't want to be prayerless. You want to understand that prayer will make you strong and continue with the Lord. Number seven, you do not want to count the, the great things of the Lord of God as a strange thing. Number eight, your emphasis will not be on material things, mundane things. Number nine, there is nothing to be proud about. What have you got that you have not been given? And if you have received it, why do you glory and you are so proud as if you did not receive it? Number 10, you will forsake and run away from the advice of unstable people.